In this video, we're just going to have a look at a few quick tips on how to represent the ground line in elevation. When we're seeing an elevation, either looking up the hill with the slope running away or beside us along the elevation, or looking from the top of the hill down, representing the ground line gets a bit complicated and we need to understand this or view this in different ways. To explain this in a bit more detail, I'm going to quickly go to the terrain story. On this story, I, I build my meshes. So this is a, an extra mesh that's outside of the site. I've called this one terrain context. So this is useful in elevation to a degree, but mostly it's very useful for things like shadow casting, shadow diagrams. On my site, I've got a, a mesh called Terrain New. This is generally uh, a layer or a mesh that I create, which is a duplicate of the surveyed darted mesh. And this will be one that I edit, that I make changes to, that I solid element operate into. And then I'll normally have another one called Terrain Existing, which of course is the surveyed express tab. Tab, 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 all right, so I don't have a, an existing. <laughs> Let's copy this. Terrain existing. And this is the surveyed one. Obviously, I don't have a survey for this. This is basically just a very simple shape. And the intention of the terrain existing is that it's just as the site currently is, which means when I need to do a section and show the line of the existing mesh and then the line of the new mesh. So if we go into a section, we can see this is the existing. If I turn that one off, We can see this is the new. So it's been cut using a solid element operation. So we can see this line here represents where the existing mesh was. So we're seeing that this is the area that's being cut. And of course, there might be some area below here that's being filled. Now, that's in section. Hopefully, that's helpful as well. But in terms of understanding this in elevation, sometimes it's hard to communicate all of this information simultaneously. Uh, let's look at the western elevation as an example. So I'm needing to step this site, which means there will be a, a retaining wall close to the boundary, but because we're so close to the boundary, in order to represent this elevation, I actually need to be outside of the site. So we're seeing this shape, which is the mesh. In this case, it's called terrain context. So this is the one outside the site, and it's not giving me a clear indication of what this wall's doing at the line of the house. So I need to turn this one off. So therefore I need to have a, a layer combination that allows that to be hidden in some cases and not hidden in others. Now the issue is that I don't want to see terrain context in my western elevation, but I do want to see it in my northern elevation. That's this one here. So how do I get around that? There's a couple ways. I could step my elevation marker. So if I turn on site plan as a reference, we can see here the boundary of the site. So I could get my western elevation tool and step it, creating multiple steps. So I'm always staying inside of my boundary line. Now that works pretty well if we're building a long way away from the boundary, but if we get very close to the boundary, that gets very hard. So as you can see, I need to have a lot of steps to make this work. Now, it's not a big deal, but it tends to make the drawing potentially look a bit strange. So here I went too far.
one mole. All right, so now I'm completely inside my boundary all the time. Let's have a look at what this looks like. So what we can see is when we're cutting through our site, this is a, a fill, which is a cover fill at the moment. Let's move this away for a second just so it's not confusing. Oh, actually, I'll just delete it, but then I'll undo that. Delete. So we can see that when we're cutting through our stairs, it looks really strange. Why is that? Because where I step my elevation, it just does some weird things. So stepping the elevation is good if you can make it work, which means I need to go in and adjust that a little bit more, but it's not perfect. Let's press undo before I get out of this. So this is a, a fill which I've used as a cover fill. Now I'm not going to represent or explain it here. Let's go to the north elevation. If I was to select this fill and delete it, this is what we're seeing. So we're seeing the existing, or the new terrain, but it's still the existing because it hasn't been filled underneath. This is a new roof which I've used to create a new earth if you like. I can make these merge I can make them show all as one shape, but it's not really achieving very much anyway. When I'm showing an elevation where I'm cutting down the hill, a faster way, so let's undo this, is to show a slab, show a fill that's representing what the ground line would look like through any place where we're cutting it. So in this case, it has to be slightly lower than the... Uh, the veranda, slightly lower than the outside ground level, and it's hiding all of the, the mesh and everything beyond which I don't want to see. So again, this is not the best BIM method, this is 2D documentation sort of stuff, uh, but it's a good way of creating an elevation ground line uh, without needing to spend a lot of extra time modeling to make that represent well. One extra thing I want to show you is we've got text here and it's going over the top of our mesh and therefore where it's going over the top of the mesh it looks a bit funny because part of it's green. One thing that we can do with the text is we can pro provide an opaque background, make that white. So that means where the text overlaps, the text is more visible and we're hiding what's behind that. Is that better? Maybe. Does it look a bit strange? Yeah, it does a little bit. I could move this text out a bit further so it's beyond the line. What does this line represent? This line and this line represent the extent of my elevation. So if I go back to my floor plan, I can change the extent of my elevation by selecting my elevation marker. In this case, that's the north marker and reducing it. So I could reduce the size of this so it's only going to my roof what I want to make sure I do, however, is actually go beyond my boundary because I want to be able to see where I'm cutting at my boundary. Again, just like my west elevation, I could step this so it gets closer to the building, but that's a little bit dangerous as well just because it's going to get messy and look ugly just like the other one did and need more work to produce that. So let's go back in. So it might not be very noticeable, but we've actually reduced, we've made this closer so less of this text is overlapping. There you go. So less of these are overlapping. We could do that smaller again, like I explained, but then we wouldn't be seeing the boundary. We just need to decide whether that's important or not important. Otherwise, I can do it the other way around. And extend this much further out. It doesn't hurt by extending it much further out. In fact, generally speaking, it's a good idea to extend it further. And when we go to that, maybe that's a better way of doing it. Maybe then we want to do the same thing with this text. So select the text of our dimensions. And similarly, give it a white background. So hopefully some of these elevation tips have been helpful. Um, I'll try to add a few more later and some more in sections that are more specific to sections. Generally what we're trying to do 
is to BIM as much as we can and then add only 2D documentation or overlays where absolutely necessary or just if the, the BIMing, the 3Ding would just take too much time and it's not justifiable. Generally, my rule of thumb for that is if you're going to see it twice, BIM it. If you're only going to see it once, what's the difference? Probably just do it as 2D.